Hello and welcome to West Country Wanderings. Welcome to another one in my railway series. This is a sort of a lost railway walk, so though it's a bit different to the usual sort of lost railway walks because we can't walk along the former track bed. Not at the moment, but there are plans to reopen it. More about that later. Where are we? Well, we're currently in the town of Brixham. We're here to explore the former railway line which once ran from Churston, originally it was called Brixham Road, to here, this wonderful important port, harbour, fishing trawler, Mecca and now tourist resort, although it wasn't when the branch line was first built. How did this all begin? And the story starts off with the South Devon Railway because they wanted a link to the important town of Dartmouth, which has been an important point, well, since the Middle Ages, increasingly important with the Navy. It certainly was very important in the 19th century, so they wanted to get a railway there. Now, due to objections from the Navy though, they couldn't get a bridge across the River Dart because it would have prevented the Navy's tour ships reaching the port and right up into the River Dart itself. So they had to settle for the town of Kingsweir. Dartmouth does have its own railway station. It's unique and it never ever seen a railway train. It was an existing railway running from Newton Abbott down into Torquay, but it stopped at a place called Tor. That was the original site of Torquay Station. And there was a plan to extend it from Tor Station down to Kingsweir, but there were lots of objections to the plan. Torbay and Torquay in particular were very well based around tourism, even then in the, that part of the 19th century, in the 1840s, and there were lots of objections that the railway would ruin this part of the English Riviera. There was also problems with how you could build the route. It was an engineering challenge because it needed lots of embankments, cuttings and tunnels as well. The railway was built in sections. The first section extended out from Torquay, building a new station, which is where the current Torquay station is, down to the town of Paynton. In 1859, it was extended to Brixham Road, as I say, that is now called Churston. What we're gonna be doing is retracing the route at the branch line that ran from here at Brixham back to Brixham Road, what is now Churston, which of course is now on the Paynton and Dartmouth Steam Railway, although at the time of making this video, the trains no longer stop at Churston Station. So I've now climbed up. This is welcome to All Saints Church, the parish church of Lower Brixham. And if we just go around here, delightful coloured houses, Round the side of the corner of the church is something interesting. Now this is Higher Street in Brixham, but just to the left of that pale green building we have this. Somebody's very thoughtfully provided a seat there. I'm not going to rest today. We're going to carry on straight up the hill to the site of the former railway station. Queen's Arms in front of us. And there in front of us is a big close to where our station was once here in Brixham. So there's only a single track line between Brixham and Churston, as I say, what was once Brixham Road. But this bridge here 
It's much deeper than three, one, one track, should I say, enough to carry at least three tracks. Now the terminus of our branch line was just a bit further to the right, just two miles away from the main line down to Kingswear. Now this would have been the main footpath access up to the station. It looks like we've actually got some broad gauge rail. Originally the branch line was built as broad gauge, converted later on in the 19th century. I wasn't expecting to see that. And here we've got a railway post as well, which would have had a gate on it. And lovely there that the cottage just to the right of it is called Signalman's Cottage. Great view over the town from this part as well. So yeah, there's the latch part of the gate there. And a hook there for a gate to rest on. The one lower down is the last missing. And just to give you an idea of how high we're up, we're looking down at people standing on a roof repairing it from this angle. Oh, that's incredible. There is bricks and breakwater, but it looks like there's a yachting event going on as well. Anyway, enough of that. We're here to look at a railway. So let's return to behind me. Now, our station would have been in this area here, but there is a new housing development, or newish, probably built in the 70s or 1980s, I would guess. So where these garages are currently would have been formerly the station yard. A line of our railway then carried on right through where those garages are now, crossing over that bridge you saw earlier in the video. Let's see if we can pick up the line of the railway a bit further on. I did read somewhere that it's that house there is the site of the former station building itself. Nothing, of course, remains today. However, we do have this board here, board to commemorate the Brixham Railway, 28th of February, 1868 to 13th of May, 1963. That's the year that it was closed. You can see on this photo here, that's the site, Brixham Railway Station, which is now that house that I just showed you. So this sign here, Furzham Park, commemorates the Brixham Railway, 28th of February 1868 to 13th of May 1963. It has a great photograph of the site. This is now Harbour View Close, that estate I just showed you. That's the station buildings there. And the outside of the station there. And it says it had a good shed, signal box, a fish dock, of course, that was an essential part of the Brixham branch and stables. And they stood to the left of the main entrance. And where I showed you that cottage, that was immediately opposite. Just love that photograph there that shows you the end of the line, the buffer stops literally hanging above almost the harbour and the sea below. Now this photograph here, shows you a class 14 xx engine number 1466 at brixham station and that is often in more photos of the line than any other and it's been preserved at didcot railway center i didn't know that perhaps i saw it in action or stationary when i visited didcot railway center previously on west country wanderings it was also given the nickname the whippet often these gwr related became GWR branch lines were given little nicknames. Where I live in Gloucestershire, there was a branch line from Cam and Dursley Station, which was Coley Junction, down into Cam and Dursley, and that was called the Dursley Donkey. But yes, here at Brixham, we had the Whippet. The other thing to note about the branch, it was paid for by a solicitor, one Richard Walter Walston. He was also the owner of Torbay Iron Paintworks that had an extensive factory here in Brixham in New Road. And the line, as I say, opened on the 28th of February 1868 as Broad Gauge. So you have this wonderful park here at Furzham. It's an absolute delight at the top of the town. I think most visitors that come to the town of Brixham probably don't even realise that this delightful space with wonderful views down across Torbay even exists. Wow, oh, that's just stunning, especially on a day like today. Now my first thoughts on the line so far is the location of the station. 
Now I'm a reasonably fit person doing all the walking that I do for the Channel West Country Wanderings. I'm not super fit, but even I found it a little bit of a struggle on a hot day like today to get up to the location of the station from the town centre. So you can see, although it had fish traffic and then they would have had to come up the hill, steep hill, presumably by horse and cart to get up to the station, it didn't really serve the needs of the tourists coming into the town. It's not very convenient, lest you were staying in a guest house around the Furzum area. Now before we continue our explore, one other thing to mention, there is a local group that are trying to get the line reopened. No, not as a preserve line or indeed part of National Rail, Network Rail, but to use it as a footpath and a cycle path. And I think that's a really, really good idea because the road that goes into Brixham, there's really only one main road and one main road out of the town. It gets very, very congested and bottleneck and it's not great for cyclists or walkers. So it'd be wonderful to be able to walk from Churston into Brixham along the old railway line. I'll put a link into the description of today's video to their Facebook group if you want to know more and get updates about what's happening about reopening this as a footpath and cycleway. So that's our railway bridge again. So we can't follow the track bed, as I said, because it's built on there to the right. We're going to carry along here following the line school and see if we can meet up with the line of the railway again. The line of our railway went along there. So just the other side of that wall, got those two or three trees there. It was just to the left of that. So we're going to follow this footpath around and see what we come up with next. Now, according to my calculations, this is a congress looking Porter Cavern sits right on the former bed, track bed of the railway branch. Indeed there in the corner, you can just make out under the shrubbery what definitely looks like a railway brick wall. Now this opens out here from the park and I would say this definitely footpath is following the original route, the railway line. You can see that it's relatively flat. But in front of that, of course, you now got a transmitter, a mobile phone transmitter blocking the original route. And that's looking back towards direction of Brixham railway station. So our route continues along here, just past the old railway garden sort of clipper there now, which was restored and redone by the youth team from Brixham in 2021. Looks absolutely fantastic. Really good to see that. So our, uh, yeah, it wouldn't have had a curve in it, but uh, this is, the footpath is absolutely following the exact line of our railway. And again, we're continuing along here weaving in between new housing, which of course has sprung up long after the railway branch line closed in 1963. Just a view looking back, you can see we're definitely on an embankment above the land that surrounds it, which would have been constructed when the railway was first built. Now the line of our railway is getting a little bit lost. It would have headed in a straight line just behind that uh, street lamp there through the fences around the back of people's gardens. Again now, this is a line of our railway, now instead it's been built in by these bungalows directly in front of me. And sadly our railway is now over the other side of this North Hill Close, which is a private estate, so I've got no right of access through there. So uh, I can't catch up there, we're going to make our way a bit further towards Churston, see so if we can catch up with it again. So I've caught up with the line again. It's an industrial estate now. That is Deuce and Builders Merch. It's not going to walk down there, but that's where the line of the railway once ran through that way, but not a lot to see. So we've now caught up with our railway line again. Again, I apologize, there's not a great deal to see here. We're now on North Boundary Road where there's a small recreation area. Now railway line once ran through where those newish white houses are there on the right of the screen and went through that grey fence across the recreation ground and then continued following the line of this road and then diverting away where that tree is there in a diagonal direction. 
kind of to the right of North Boundary Road. We're going to catch it up with it again shortly. So we've caught up with our railway line again. You can see a humpback bridge with this minor road to Churston Ferris went over a Brixham branch line. So this is the view from the other side of the bridge. I'm not sure what's going on here at the moment. There's been some development where it's going on. I don't think that's actually to do with the new clearance works, but they have been clearing the area. The former track bed bent round just to the right of that farm gate there where the uh, sheep are. Let's just have a look on the other side of the bridge. A little bit of clearance work has been taking place there. You can see there the original cutting of the branch line there. Just left of that tree, you can see where the rock has been exposed. And there's the track bed there, although unfortunately, yeah, as you guessed it, people have just decided to chuck some drunk junk down there. Now, sadly, this point here where the bridge is over that road, we've got to uh, the old uh, straining post there. It looks like the bridge has been partially infilled. I don't think that was then to strengthen it or not. I think that's just where it cleared out. But uh, yeah, we've got the usual debris of uh, old mattresses and old tyres, the usual sort of thing with a disused railway. So there is a minor lane that leads off the road that goes to Churston Ferris. But it's just behind me where it gets quite interesting. There, and there's the other side of the bridge this time. You can see where it's been infilled. But it's only partially been infilled with a bit of rubble. I think it's just a scrape off the uh, soil, really. It's not a... hasn't been cemented or concreted in, so that would be relatively easy to clear that through once more. Now, while I was standing on the bridge doing a... Uh, looking at down at the old railway track bed, I actually met another YouTuber and subscriber. Give a shout out now to Simon Law, who lives in the Brixham area, does fantastic videos with his photography as well, landscapes, He's done several brilliant videos over at Berry Head and lots over at Dartmoor and local woodland as well. So it's a real pleasure to meet Simon. Really enjoyed meeting you, Simon. We had a chat about the railway as well as talking about YouTube -y things as well. I'll put a link to Simon's channel in the description of this one. Now, this is nothing to do with the railway. This is the end of the John Musgrove, not the end of it, but of where it comes out here in Churston Ferris, of the John Musgrove Trail, which has come from a place called the Grove. You can follow that footpath that takes you to the Grove and then Fishcombe Cove, where you can follow the Southwest coast path around to Brixham town centre. So we've now picked up with our railway again and we have another railway bridge. The road carries on straight through and takes you to Churston Cross where it meets the main road going into Brixham. We however can turn right here and follow a minor road which runs parallel to the former track bed of the Brixham branch line. So yes this bridge is at the junction of Bascombe Road and Churston Road. Interestingly, the, f the fence there, which runs above the original parapet of the bridge, looks like it's recently been replaced. And that over there is Churston Ferrers Church. If you want a closer look at that, I've done a separate video and a walk to Elbury Cove and it goes past the church. So there's our line of the railway on the embankment there above this road. So we're following the road down here, as I say, I have the track bed, there it is, on that side there. My left, your right of the screen. And uh, yeah, it's great to see that, and I think some clearance work has been taken there. Good to see that that bridge is in very good order as well. Brickwork looks immaculate. Looks like, you know, that could have only been built a few years ago. But yeah, got wonderful countryside here as well should be able to come up to another bridge shortly and then the line will be curving in. Now alas, this bridge here which carried the line, the branch line above there across Elbury Lane was taken out some years ago. The red brick, that's not original, that's not part of the original bridge. I don't know the reason why this has been taken out. Perhaps it was originally intact and the bridge got struck by a lorry or tractor at some point and it was deemed unsafe and then taken down because it is only a very minor lane that crosses through this, this way. But we have 
one more bridge to see before it linked up with the main line. Now uh, here you can see the work that's been taken place recently by the volunteers trying to get this open, opening up access of the line. You can see there clearance work has been taken place. You can also see that new wooden fence on the side of it. But also in front of the fence you can see the original railway fence as well. And that's the bridge from the Elbury Lane end. Oh, in case you're wondering what Elbury Lane looks like, no, it's not a tarmac lane as it appears to be here. That is Elbury Lane, which is why I was surprised to see that the bridge had been taken out. But as I say, I'd hazard to guess it was been struck accidentally, which probably made it unsafe and had to be taken down. So we're nearly at Journey's End now. As I say, we've got one more thing to show you up here before well, I can show you at Churston Station. Unfortunately, Churston Station is now a disused station, probably one of the most recent disused station, because it closed in 2020. It's no longer served by steam trains and the paint and the Dartmouth Steam Railway. This is our last bridge here, a bridge going over the former Brixham branch line. Yes, and that's looking down into the undergrowth, but that was the route of the line there. There's a railway post there though. There's the abutment to the bridge. But I can't show the other song because it is someone's garden the house has been built since the railway closed. Well, that's Journey's End. I can't do a piece of camera right by Churston Station. I'm going to show you that. Add some music to it at the end. But it is a little bit sad to see. It's now a disused station. Probably one of the most newest disused stations in the country, as I say. Closing to steam trains in 2020 for reasons best be known to the owners of the Painted and Dartmouth Railway. Um, they don't run it as a voluntary preserve line like a lot of the ones I've covered previously on the channel like the Dean Forest, Gloucestershire, Warwickshire, Avon Valley, Swindon Cricklade etc etc. It's actually run for profit so they're always looking at the bottom line and they have paid employees so it's a very, very different type of operation. So if it's not profitable to keep the station open, it closes. As brutal as that. But it is sad to see it is now starting to deteriorate quite badly with bits of wood falling off the former footbridge across the line. But uh, I'll leave other, ones, other people to argue that one out. But our railway continued in a curve. There is a new housing development, so I can't show you that there. So there's a curve there. And then you have a bridge there, and just before that bridge is where the Brixham branch. I'll oh, insert a photograph now of what it looked like, where it joined the main line as it were, heading down. Although, of course, there was a terminus line finishing up at Kingsweir, heading down from Torquay. And there is a turntable, which I think was, may have been put in the 1990s, and that is around the site where the two link together. They've now got sidings which are slightly higher grade and that's where the Brixham line curved in away from the main line that heads north back to Paynton where the Paynton Dartmouth steam line ends. That's it for West Country Wanderings for today. Hope you enjoyed this tour of the Brixham branch line. Don't forget to check out the Facebook group of the volunteers that are trying to get a pressure group and council and national lottery support to get this line reopened as a footway or cycleway should I say and footpath right into the heart of the wonderful town of Brixham here in South Devon. If you like this sort of thing here on West Country Wanderings I do other lost railway walks this is number I can't remember if this is five or six I think it's number six. I'm doing exploring sections of the Somerset and Dorset Railway there'll be some bits and pieces in the Forest of Dean and I'm also planning to do some other bits and pieces in the county of Cornwall. So if you like for that, don't forget to hit subscribe and then you too alert you when the next one uploads here on West Country Wanderings. Thank you very much for watching today. I very much appreciate it. Take care of yourselves, look after yourselves, and I hope to see you on the channel again very, very soon. All the best. Bye-bye.